Hi there, and welcome into the Reno You Know. My name is Steve Ellison, and I'm here to share some things about Reno in Northern Nevada that I think are pretty cool, and I think you'll find them interesting too. Uh, maybe you're considering moving to Reno, or you just arrived, or you've lived here for 37 years like I have, uh, and you're interested in what makes this little corner of the, of the world unique. There's really no place quite like Reno. We grew up differently than the other kids. Our city has different bones, and we're still transitioning from a Wild West gambling town in the divorce capital of the world into a, a viable and vibrant destination for new industries and the people that work for them, and we'll call this place home. We'll explore a lot of historical topics as well as talk about things that are going on right now. And we'll also probably talk about craft beer because I'm all about craft beer. So let's get started and dive into episode number one, The Red Line. Many old timers will tell you that in the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, Reno really was the biggest little city. It had quite the feel of a village and people knew each other and of course it had the same uh, amenities as any other community, schools, churches, retail establishments and hospitals. But uh, Reno was different because the community and all of that had to coexist with gambling which of course was legalized in Nevada in 1931. To many people, gambling was not exactly a moral activity, but it was tolerated because, well, it was legal and it did bring in tourists from mainly California, but all over the world. And of course, those tourists brought their dollars. In an effort to prevent the sprawl of casinos all over town, the uh, city government drew a red line, a hypothetical red line, on a map around four blocks of downtown and any casino business in that area could operate uh, fairly unrestricted. They could expand, add on, and uh, conduct business as they saw fit. Any effort to expand beyond the red line required that you added 100 hotel rooms, which was the city's effort to compete with Las Vegas. Up until the early 1960s, Reno actually had more tourist uh, visits than Las Vegas. The casino operators that were grandfathered into this uh, mythical zone were generally pleased with that arrangement. Um, that would be Harold's Club, Harrah's, the Bank Club, Palace Club, and some others. At least that gambling area was delineated from the rest of the community. And uh, new operators or someone late to the game would have a hard time setting up a business that would uh, rival and compete. It's also interesting at this time that casinos were operated by families and individuals corporations weren't involved until the uh, Gaming Act of 1969. This is the bounding area. Commercial Road to the north. Center Street to the east. Second Street to the south. and Virginia Street to the west. Right now it's snowing and my hands are pretty numb, so I'm gonna probably finish up this video at another warmer location. Ah, that's better. I've made my way over to Pigeon Head Brewing near downtown Reno, and I'm enjoying their fly-by-night IPA, which is really yummy, very balanced, not too hoppy. And anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, the uh, 
the notion to add a hundred hotel rooms with your new project to be outside of the red line sounded like a great idea, but they didn't get many proposals uh, to do so. One dude, however, took serious issue with this governmental overreach, and his name was Ernie Prim. In 1951, he sued the city in order to get an establishment open on the west side of Virginia Street, and he was not permitted to do so by the city council. And so he appealed to the Nevada Supreme Court, and they again said, sorry, pal, uh, the city has absolute right to approve or deny these kinds of things. Not to be deterred, uh, Ernie Prim then circulated petitions and uh, long story short, kind of waited out the city council until new faces uh, appeared there and he probably helped get some of them elected. And um, he finally got his approval and he's basically the guy that's responsible for opening the, uh, the way for the uh, landscape that we see today.